That's that's a, that's a good. Should we therefore, in a way, uh, adapt ourselves to the fact that most people are amazingly stupid? No. We should try to explain what is the right course, and if they don't agree, we simply follow our course and and suggest that something else. Uh, I can I can give you lots and lots of examples of of a political course where most people are strong. Take the EU in the Netherlands. Most people nowadays are against the EU because it's it's complicated, it's expensive, and so forth and so on. Think about a referendum about the EU in 2005, I think it was, or six. In five, okay. So, uh, what happened? The, the, the stupid voters voted against it, as you, as you remember, and everybody who was able to think longer than three seconds at, at the time knew, of course, that all these proposals would be realized along another route, actually, and that has happened. Is that wrong? Should we take the should we take the general stability of the of the, of the population as a as our point, our starting point for our political analysis? No, I don't think so. That's not the that's not the, the, the task of a of a political and cultural elite. That's elitism, as you know. One of the worst things, according to right-wing politicians, is elitism. That any society, small or big, American or Dutch, old or young, has an elite. And if if the right-wingers actually were successful in, in uh, chasing away the old elite, then they will form a new elite. That's the way it is. That's the way it works. And in my view, the present elite, I'm part of the present elite, happily. Um, maybe your IQ is 120. You're a Dutch guy studying at a, an English language institution, which let's say your EQ, IQ is 120. IQ is an average, as you know. So there's some poor guy somewhere who has 80 to give you 120. <laughs> The average is 100. Yeah. Did you realize that? <laughs> are, are, are you willing to let to let one part of your brain being excised and 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 given to this poor guy who has 80? I can assure you that 80 is not that much, and you don't understand anything about the way the political system works, or the parliamentary system, or the world economy, or whatever. You, you, the only thing you can do is you are able to recognize Wesley's name. <laughs> should, we, should we adapt to? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. No. Okay, now you are nearing, you are nearing me. Um, not molding, that's not the word. What you should try is try to explain how things are. And you can try to do that in, in the simplest and, and clearest way possible. But even then, most of them don't want to hear your clear and simple explanations at all. They want to hear about Wesley Snyder and, and his girlfriend, whatever her name is. And the wonderful apartment that they have in Milan. That's what they want to hear. But yes, I'm willing to explain. That's what I've been doing for years and years, to explain it in the most simple language that I can explain it. But even then you should know, you should realize that, that to some extent <coughs> everything that you have been done is, is not enough in, in explaining. And so you have to recognize the limits of, of democracy. Yeah, there should be an elite who takes decisions when maybe a large minority or even a majority goes the wrong way. And, and in the Netherlands we have a expression which is called, which is called the, the, the kiezer heeft al de gelijk. The voter is always right. And as soon as you say that on television, everybody is nodding, yeah, yeah, the voter is always right. Until you suddenly 
remembered uh, late 32 and early 33 in Germany. Is the voter always right? Really? Was the voter right by voting for the for the Dutch Nazi party? Was the voter right in all these other situations when they voted for terrible, aggressive, extremely nationalistic policies? No, not at all, of course. So, so let's recognize the fact that sometimes minorities, small minorities, even elites are right. And, and a large majority is wrong. And I like fighting. And I like, I like making people look ridiculous. It's, it's a wonderful thing to do. Yeah, I'm sorry to say so. Yep. One more question. One more question. Oh, you're longing for the alcohol, perhaps. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I have a question on your view on the uh, on Obama and how you say he was effective and pragmatic in his all the bills that he passed throughout his first term. Uh, and what I don't understand um, the reasoning behind that kind of answer because he entered uh, the White House uh, in January of 2009 with 60 percent of public approval, plus he had control of both houses, and still uh, he managed to pass laws that in itself were pretty much short term. Um, reactions to the problems in the U.S. in the long term won't actually prove, won't actually fix the U.S. up and heal the economy and its social uh, infrastructure. And also, um, in your view, that the right wing party and the Tea Party and the whole radicalism of the right wing is um, is kind of like a cancer on the, the conservative party. I, don't you think that the actual establishment and the moderate Republicans and the fact that the, the Tea Party doesn't really have that much say, and it's the, it's the money that really makes the world go round in the U.S. is the bigger concern, and that the fact that you can actually pretty much pay money to your politicians to uh, do what you uh, tell them to what you want to do is the actual issue at hand here. Yeah, that's actually two questions. Yes, yeah, two questions. Maybe yeah, five. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, let's see, uh, let's, let's start with the first question. And the first question, that's the so-called mandate theory, that, that Obama had this large popular mandate as a president when he uh, entered the White House in January 2009. And uh, that's what the, quite a lot of, of let's say, uh, left-wing-oriented uh, progressive people thought in 2009. But I, I, I don't believe the mandate theory at all. I think I think the the mandate theory theory is is too strong. And Obama was largely a reaction against Bush Jr. And then, of course, if you start making laws in the United States, then of course, simply saying, "Oh, we have got a majority in the House and a majority in the Senate, so we we can opt for a very radical." Uh, vision of this particular problem, that's simply not true. Because these Democrats, for example, because you need all the Democrats that you can get, you need 60 Democrats in the Senate, of course, because of the ridiculous 60-vote 60, 60 rule that they have there, which is not in the Constitution, by the way, but, but still exists. Uh, lots of these Democrats are very conservative Democrats voted for in very conservative states, some of them actually in typical red states. Look at Montana, for example. So you need all the Democrats. That's point one. There are quite a lot of left-wing Democrats, but some of them are quite right-wing, actually. Some of them are left-wing, but all for the financial interest. Like, take a guy like Chuck Schumer, 